So we open his Kenya twirls off being gone with the wind, fabulous. Portia said, I may be 10, 15 years younger than her, but I'm more mature. As Kenya twirls off to her boudoir with her man that don't want her. Kenya, um, now you may not be a tramp, but the way you was throwing yourself at Apollo was tramp-esque. tramp light, tramp adjacent. Oh, Lord, Kenya up talking to anybody, Walter. He looking so confused. She's saying, I'm part of history, so you can try to be relevant. Because, Lionel, you haven't danced with me all night. It's more Obama, Clinton, Kennedy. Part of his. I need this kind of Delulu. Everybody needs a little bit of this Delulu, because you know what? We're important too, too. We're part of history as well. Kenya said, what have you done but lay on your back and get a ring for it? Well, I guess that's more than you've gotten. The next morning, in Candy and the toddler's room, Nene and her hairpiece drop by. Do I still have my Nene wig? I might have it. Wait, is it? And it's nice and nappy and natty in the back. But Nene come in Candy room. All right, I got to tell you about last night, man. So then Candy and Nene talk about their not quite friendship ship. And they agree they're going to work on it because they have no reason to have beef. Oh my goodness, we haven't seen this Lanethia in years. Over in Portia's room, she's filling in Cordelia on the events of the evening. So we got three days left of this trip and Kenya's hoping for a proposal. Will you better hope, hope on? So as we get together for the day, Kenya said, I'm going to be the bigger woman and apologize. So this apology starts to go left because Portia ain't trying to hear it. But you did call her a tramp. Over with the Mrs. Peter says, I'm going to go out and tell the girls we ready to go. And Cordell saying, Sir Strong, you've got my permission. This is why you ain't got a woman today. So after shooing Peter away, they finally get on the bus. So we get to our first activity, which is horseback riding. Oh, God. So before we horseback ride, we sitting down having some drinks. And Kenya gives Cynthia a shady gift. Vanessa Williams' book with her mom, you have no idea, because Cynthia said she had no idea that Vanessa was the first Miss America. So Cynthia says, you know what, girl? I love a good book, so thanks for the gift. But in her confessional says, once again, being mean-spirited and inappropriate. However, after that, Cynthia and Kenya have a powwow on the beach. And Cynthia's like, look, you know what the business is. You know what an open call is. If you don't like them, they don't get the job. Why are you trying to break girls' spirits? And Kenya said, well, I would never do that. But you did. Kenya then says, well, you know, when I was doing a pageant, I wasn't dressed appropriately and a judge pulled me to the side. Yes, pulled you to the side, not called you coochie crack in front of everybody. So then they get to yelling at each other. Child, so Kenya fall out on the sand. Cynthia keeps belaboring her point. Kenya like, make it stop. I'm like, make it stop too at this point. But at least they're going to be able to be cordial for now. Cordial. So we all go out to dinner that night and Kenya's going to embarrass herself. Oh, God. Peter compliments Walter on his pink shirt. And he's like, oh, yeah, some men can do it. And Kenya says, we match. And the look on his face. God, you can't stand this one. Then he said, that wasn't planned now. Well, hold on. Now, now, Walter, now this is where I got to tear into your ass. Now, this heifer has been begging you to elope. Now, you want to say, that wasn't planned. You on a couple's trip with the heifer. Now, you want, well, I mean, I guess you didn't want no pussy, so. You've been sick of doing this favor all weekend. That wasn't planned. God. And then your dumb ass said, well, we got three days. Anything can happen. Mm-hmm, your three days are up. Now, this is when Kenya is playing us, the audience. I do not believe in any way that Kenya is up. Well, I, I can't stand it down because you married Mark. I was going to say you wasn't stupid enough to think that this guy would actually propose, but you married Mark, and that was dumb. 
So you might have been stupid enough to believe that you could have gotten married. You might have. So as Kenya's embarrassing herself, Peter stops her and has all the men get up for a toast and he's congratulating Cordelia and Portia, Paolo and Fei Fei, Candy and her toddler, and then says, Kenya, Walter, I didn't think y'all was a couple in my opinion, but, uh, you know, Walter's a cool dude. Penelope said, but you got less than 12 hours to pop the question. The question's gonna be, we even taking the same plane home? Now Walter says, oh, I didn't say when I was gonna propose. You said we got three days left, anything could happen. If you weren't gonna propose in the next three days, you shouldn't have said that. That is lying and gaslighting. After that, that gets everybody else telling their engagement stories, infuriating Kenya even more. And Kenya, why do you have on this bruised purple eyeshadow? That color doesn't go with anything you have on or your complexion. Damn, now this was probably Phaedra's best read. Kenya's appearing desperate and longing to be loved and can't seem to draw the right attention. And that's sad. Nene said, now you can't force no man to no engagement. The best way to get is with a closed mouth. So Kenya's realizing she ain't getting ringed at first and gotta get on this plane tomorrow embarrassed and alone. So she sulks off to cry. Walter gonna go after her. You all right? I mean, what's wrong? Your dumb ass said you was gonna propose and you didn't. Now Kenya's upset with his tone. He talking to me any cold kind of way. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He was telling you something you didn't want to hear, and he's like, I'm not going to let you pressure me into marrying you. That's not talking to you any kind of way. He was not yelling or being disrespectful. Walter gets back to the table, and Nene and Cynthia are like, you, you could have been a bit misleading with that. Cynthia said, y'all moving to Angula, because if you're going to say, oh, this is a nice place to elope, well, you, you coming back? Now, this is an actual nice moment between Phaedra and Kenya, and Phaedra really comforts her and prays with her. And Kenya said, I don't know why you thought this man was going to marry you after two days and a, and a sorry little financial arrangement. But okay, Heffa, I guess you a better actress than we thought. Well, that was the shit, and I'm going to see you soon for the next episode. So we open with a flashback of last episode when Walter's lying to Kenya. Well, we've still got three days. You don't know what could happen. This heifer asked you to elope. Why are you going to dangle that carrot in front of someone so desperate? She gone out with you for two dates and is asking you to get murdered. I'd run. It's so funny to see Portia call Kenya a tramp with the stunt she's pulled. So we open with Kenya's, I've been in this business for 20 years and I'm still here and I'm still fabulous. When were you ever fabulous? With your C-list movies that would come on BET after dark? With your under five in waiting to exhale? Is twa what makes you fabulous? Twa? She's gone with the wind, fabulous. You weren't in Gone with the Wind, and that wouldn't have been a role you wanted. And she twirls off in a nightgown that does not complement her complexion. It's a good complexion. Bumpy skin, but good complexion. She should have done a yellow, not a beige. But then again, it's that beige dusty rose and I don't like beige dusty rose on anybody. Oh Jesus, Nene and the... <laughs> you know, I just zoomed in, like my eyes just took a beeline to Nene's jean shorts and I just thought of my grandmother. Those are the shorts that my grandmother would wear when she was like doing the wash and then like she'd hang up her sheets in the backyard next to the rose bush. And I was, when I was really little, she had this metal washing tub that she'd fill up with the hose and then I'd get in there and pretend it was a pool. Mm-hmm. It took me right back there, right back to grandmama. And she, of course, has paired it with the tunic. I'm surprised we're not getting a cold shoulder. But then again, I guess life has given Nene the cold shoulder. You know what, Godiva, maybe she was trying to give a nude effect, but that wasn't even a white woman's nude. I, I mean, maybe, but like then she should have gone with like a beautiful, rich chocolate color. That would have given that illusion. Beigey, dusty road, that, mm -mm. I don't know. I don't know whose nude that is. <laughs> That's the wrong nude, honey. So Nene goes over to console Portia. Oh, Portia, you look like an absolute clown in your first confessional. I mean, bow, 
Zoe, your makeup has really come up. Ooh, ooh, Lord. That early makeup was harsh, like Toya's. Oh, God, now Kenya's up in the room crying, Walter trying to help her. Well, Kenya, I'm sorry. Your behavior during this trip has been tramp-esque. I mean, from your pursuit of Apollo, you're trying to hump the hotel guy, like every man that was there that wasn't Walter, you were interested in. If somebody called me a tramp that I didn't know that well, I don't care. Okay, you know what, I guess I'm a tramp. Did your life change? Did your house get any bigger? Did money appear in your bank account? Did anything change for me? No? Oh, okay. Well, I guess, you, I guess you're not a witch and that wasn't a spell that you cast. They're just worthless words. Hot air. Talk is incredibly cheap. So cheap it seems to be what you can afford by the bucketful. Oh, God. If you were on the street and called me that name, you'd be six feet under right now. Really? Kenya, you can't even stand up to Mark. I'm a businesswoman. I'm not just Miss USA. I'm a part of history. Honey, we're all a part of history. So Kenya has opened the door for Portia to try to become relevant. But aren't you also walking through that same door that you supposedly cracked open? You've been trying to be relevant for 20 years, half of Portia's life. She said it's more Obama, Clinton, Kennedy, more like delusion, hypocrisy, and lumpy butt. <laughs> and Nene said, look, ain't nobody thinking back to 93. And then we cut back to Kenya. What has she done but lay on her back and get a ring for it? Well, um, that's something you can't seem to do. It's a skill set. She's gotten more rings than you. And her men stick around. They cohabitate. To you, men do not gravitate. And baby, that's why you hate. So now Nini drops by Candy's to fill her in on the drama from last night. The back of Nini's head, this whole trip, the back of Nini's head. I mean, you couldn't get a decent little wiglet cap. You just gonna have this Decatur quick weave two piece in your head. I mean, cause you got pieces in the front, but nothing in the back, just a welcome mat. But now Nini confronts Candy on saying that, oh, when you had your Women's of Success event, you did it with an ulterior motive. But Nini does anything with an ulterior motive. Candy's right. And she fast. She said, yeah, yeah, I absolutely felt that way. Because it's who you are, Heifer. It's who you are. Oh, Lord. Then we go back to Candy's first season. And oh, that rooster do she had, them, them, them curls. And honestly, you could tell it was human in there because the hairstyle has fallen. So basically, Candy and Nene feel like neither one of them are big up in each other the way they're supposed to. <laughs> this is some of the best Nene shade. You know, everybody needs love. And Candy and Todd, they're both short and they both need love. <laughs> But I think this is when Nene actually didn't feel as threatened by Candy because her star was on the rise. And so she was able to genuinely say, I'm happy for you and you're doing your thing. Oh goodness, but now we've got Sissy Stewart, Sissy Stewart, interrogating Portia on what went on last night. Like he's somebody pappy. So it's the last day on the island and Kenya's just waiting for Walter to propose. Ooh, you stupid. Walter gonna say, I didn't see it as flirting. I saw it more as hosting or networking. Really? Well, you're a simp trying to save face. She's embarrassed you all, Trip. And I guess that's why you got her back with that false promise of an engagement. You're right, Kenya. Walter's very secure in a relationship he doesn't care about. There's nothing more secure than that feeling because <laughs> he knows I can't wait to get rid of you. He was there for his honorarium and a free trip. I just want this day to be over with because I want to be a missus. And it looks like I'm just hours away. Do you buy your own delusion? So Kenya gets on the bus and apologizes for calling Portia out of her name. And Portia's looking at her. Well, Portia said it was a raisin face, but to me it gives more the bark of a tree. Very textured, very rough. A braille tea. Kenya goes on to say, however, Portia, you gonna call me a tramp? I'm nobody's tramp. You're right. 
You are absolutely right. You are no one's triumph. Mm, mm, mm. Don't nobody want you. So now Peter comes over and says, look, y'all, the bus is hot. Y'all have had your little apologies. Let's get to going. Now, I will agree with Nene. Kenya ain't really apologized, and Portia definitely didn't accept it. So we go to have lunch under a sunshade on the beach. Oh, they're like on the beach. They're like in the water where it's like your feet are wet. Oh, that's cute. I don't know. Everything about Cordelia rubs me the wrong way. He gone ask, so uh, ladies, is everything all right? Being the lovely ladies that you are? Like, are you trying to convince yourself of your heterosexuality? Are you trying to convince them, us? I don't think any of us are buying it. Not even you. Not even you. But Kenya pipes up and says, Cynthia, I have a gift for you. You know I'm good friends with Vanessa Williams. You're not good friends with anyone because you're not good friends with you. Oh, Lord. So she's giving her the book because Cynthia didn't know that Vanessa Williams was the first black Miss America. I got her to autograph it for you, so I want to give this to you. Child, I bet you that's a forgery. I wouldn't put it past you. You got Brandon to do it. That's what you're going to give her as a gift. That is the shadiest gift. You see, this is why no one likes Kenya. Because it wasn't necessary to put this 20 on 10. But it's so nice nasty. Oh, goodness. Now, Cynthia, you need to own the shade that you threw. You throwing a rock and hide in your hand. It was a compliment, okay? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was shade. You were getting her back. What year did you win? Were you before or after Vanessa Williams? No, you, that was shade, honey. That was shade. You threw it. She returned serve a little harder than you could throw. But, you know, it's fine. She loves a prop. The camera did not have to give us a close-up on Nene's hooves as the water came in. Just beef to heel, honey. Beef to heel. Oh, Lord. Now we got Nene and Greg necking. They gonna get married again. We know. We know y'all got divorced for tax purposes and plot line. Because the truth is we've seen what Nene really has to bring. A one-note character. So now Cynthia and Kenya are going to have a conversation. This year was Cynthia's best confessional look when she had on that beautiful purple eyeshadow and dress. She's great in a cool color. So Cynthia felt that Kenya was disrespectful when she was at the Bailey agency saying, Coochie crack, coochie crack, coochie crack. And I agree with Sin Sin, but let's not act like this wasn't a plot line business, like this wasn't a sham, a lose, a joke. The Bailey agency didn't do anything for anyone but you and Penelope Thomas. I mean, you never even addressed when you shut the Bailey agency down. Oh, goodness, can you go and say, Oh, well, some of those girls called me and said, thank you so much for pulling me to the side and letting me know that it wasn't a pro-pro. Kenya, you're lying. Like you're lying about your marriage to Mark. Like you're lying that you weren't paying Walter to be with you. You're lying. So now Kenya and Cynthia get into it because Kenya's like, well, you know what? You treat people differently than I do because Cynthia said, well, I had just as many people call me and say they were embarrassed at the open call. And they had been to so many different open calls at the school and this was their first time feeling that way. Girl, you only had two open calls. One when you opened and one for this. Don't act like you was in that office. And don't act like that school has a phone that works. But Kenya, it was not your environment, and it wasn't her environment, but when you invite an ass, they're going to show up with their butt on their shoulders, lumps and all. Oh, Lord, so now Nene and Phaedra go to see what's their kerfuffle, and Phaedra in this bathing suit. I don't see a donkey booty. I honestly see a flat butt. Like, you just stick it out. That's all you doing. You stick it out. Ain't nothing back there. Ain't nothing back there. So Cynthia says, look, I just needed you to come and support. And she was definitely looking for a moment. But can you gonna say, okay, this is two months after the fact. Well, Cynthia can definitely draw something out in quote unquote her time because, you know, she's got to deal with Penelope Thomas and her failing businesses. So Kenya just decides to make the moment funny and again about her and just Rah! and falls down on the sand. Oh, these hand gestures. Okay, so basically Cynthia has a point and you don't want to concede. So you're going to try to laugh it off. Instead of taking accountability. This is also why nobody likes Kenya. 
Kenya screaming, make it stop. The only thing you want to stop is your accountability. But her and Cynthia are good now. Oh goodness, now Nini's leading some type of stretching in my grandmama's shorts. Ooh, I mean all the cute shorts you could have gotten and you gonna wear them, them dungarees. <laughs> Ooh, Nini is in a dungaree. My younger Biff is y'all ain't gonna know about dungarees, but uh, some of y'all, y'all go, your grandmamas, your grandmamas would put you in some dungarees. <laughs> oh my god. Nene in these dungarees, I can't. See, you could only get dungarees at like Woolworth. Like, you gotta go back in time. That's when you would get a malt. Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> All right, so now we're at dinner, and you know what that means, confrontate. <laughs> so Penelope Thomas tells Walter how fetching he looks in pink, and then Kenya says, we match. And Walter said, well, it wasn't planned that way. And Kenya gonna say, but they are wedding colors. I mean, they're wedding colors, but Kenya ain't have nobody's wedding. She had a staged photo shoot at Bess, and a donor at Honest. Walter, do you remember the conversation we had the other day? Yeah, when he lied to you and to get back at you for flirting with everybody and making him look like a fool. A rented fool, but still a fool. Then again, he looks like a fool with that Steve Harvey toupee, so he should be used to it. We talked about the other day. We should stay here and just elope. See, you put the cart before the horse. You don't get any romance, any special treatment, any anything. You just, well, anybody. That's where you wanted Walter. I guess that's why you rented him. You know, he had a hat on and it took me a minute to, for it to register because his toupee gives so much hat tea too. I almost couldn't tell the difference if it wasn't for the logo. <laughs> So Kenya's like, since we're on this beautiful island and uh, you know I want a quick wedding. You got a quick wedding, all right, and a quick union. Well, no union, no cohabitation, no support, no love. Mm, mm, mm. And you signed up for it. That was your choice. Nobody arm wrestled you. You didn't end up pregnant. I mean, it just, you, you chose foolishness. <laughs> But Penelope Thomas asks all the men to stand up and Walter's like, thank God, anything to break up this conversation. She's not paying enough for this. Look, I'm a weekend gig. She's trying to get a full year lease. So Penelope giving us a drunk toast, so happy for all the couples. And then he finally get to Kenya and Walter. And Penelope's giving it to us honest. When I first met y'all, I didn't think you were a couple. Well, they're not. They never were. And they never will be. Now that I think about who's she really been with, because I, I don't count Mark. To me, a sleight of hand magic trick. You know, she just got something up her sleeve. And then he gonna say, but now that I see you're a good dude with the cheap toupee, I know it's got to be real. And a little birdie named Carlos King told me that you had three days to the question. The only question he's asking is, when can I get the hell out of here? Oh, ho, 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 the look he gave him. <laughs> ah, and then Peter has such a good drunk smile on his face like, hey, dude, this is how the game is played. And you leave it in the morning, so you've got less than 12 hours. I wonder if Cynthia was the one who pushed Penelope to say this to get back at Kenya yet again. I could see Cynthia being that petty. And you know Penelope's that petty. Oh, she couldn't wait. Oh, Nene said, oh, Kenya said that. Wait, what? Kenya said we're getting married, we're eloping? She said it on camera. So you know she said it behind your back and in front of your toupee. But you said we had three days of anything could happen. Whenever somebody says anything could happen, nothing will. That's the polite way of saying no. That's when somebody who's indecisive or afraid of confrontation or afraid of quote unquote disappointing somebody, that's how they say no. The second somebody say that to me, I'm like, okay, let me give him around you because you don't, you don't know how to effectively communicate what you actually want to do. Let me go at my own pace. You don't want that woman and she don't want you. Oh, 
Kenya's going to say, so Todd, how do you think you'd propose Candy? Shut that shit down. She said, what you ain't going to do is bring your relationship mess over here. I already have to deal with half a Joyce. So now we're going through how everybody else got engaged. Wait a minute. Apollo put the ring in his mouth and then tried to put the ring in her mouth when he kissed her. That's the stupidest shit ever. You end up choking to death. Oh my good lord, he's dumb. I'm surprised he didn't choke to death on it. You know, just just put it in a box. Open it up here. That it's a that it's safe. Nobody's chipping a tooth. Like the fuck? That could go wrong so many different ways. Wow. That's as dumb as kids force. Phaedra, how did you let Apollo know when you were ready to get engaged? And Phaedra in the confession are gonna say, I feel sorry for Kenya, and she's someone to feel sorry for. <laughs> she wants to be loved, but she's not attracting that attention, and that's what's sad. Nene said, look, you can't force no man into an engagement. The best way to get a ring is with a closed mouth. And then Portia pipes up, ooh, girl, if you pressure a man, you might end up standing at that altar by yourself. And Sissy Stewart looked at her like, <clears throat> <laughs> you pressured me. No, honey, society pressured you so you could get rid of those gay rumors. That's why you ran and got with Portia. Please. You couldn't get her pregnant because from the streets of New York all the way out to Vegas, it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're famous because you can't get someone pregnant in the anus. I could see you having a secret vasectomy and not telling her. Kenya, meanwhile, is having it sink in that Walter has embarrassed you. He sunned you. He lied to you. He gave you the moment that you wanted for the camera. And now he's taking it back. So Kenya storms off and Walter follows her. And he said, what's wrong? What's wrong? You lied and said you were going to propose to this woman over the next three days. But that anything could happen. You should have told her nothing would. She had nothing to look forward to but being single and eventually meeting an asshole named Mark and a nut named Mike. Maybe you need to stay away from M's or inverted M's. Now, Walter want to gaslight her. I said I was open to eloping. That doesn't mean tomorrow. Oh, you said we've got three days and anything could happen. And eloping means quick, sudden, and to the point. Eloping is not something that you plan on doing months or years down the line. You are a sorry piece of shit for this. But then again, she was flirting with everybody, having Apollo feel up on that lumpy butt in front of you. So, you know, turnabout is fair play. You played with her heart, but she played with yours. Oh, Jesus Christ. This <laughs> It's so sad when your toupee needs a haircut, but it really does. But I'm not going to let you or anybody pressure me into getting married. Kenya going to say, why are you yelling? I'm not yelling. I'm making sure you're hearing me. Now, you're embarrassing her thoroughly. And you want to make sure the whole table hears so she's got to deal with the fallout since you know you ain't getting no pussy tonight. So she says, you know what, Walter? Okay, it's cool. It's fine. You played the game. You got the scene. You got your moment. And he going to say, don't say, oh, it's cool because it's what you don't want to hear, then why did you tell her what you wanted to hear three days ago? So you could get her off your back. So Kenya going to say it's his tone and then storm off. And he's like, just make sure she gets on the bus, okay? I'm going to go enjoy the rest of this free trip that I've conned her out of. Kenya going to say, you know, just talk to me like a man that loves a woman. Well, he don't love you. He don't love you. I hate to tell you. Now, Walter lying at the table, Oh, well, we did have a conversation. I said we could probably elope. No, you said, well, we've got three days. Anything could happen. I'm open to eloping. When you ask somebody to elope, that usually means like, okay, we're going to go do this in the next 20, 30 minutes, maybe six hours, grab a flight to Vegas. That's when you say elope, especially with a fruitcake like Kenya. So now Phaedra goes to console Portia in their one moment of friendship on the series. Now, Phaedra actually, now, Phaedra's actually speaking a word. She said, the only people looking for a husband is one who's never had one. It's more work than you think. And Phaedra knows how to pick them because she always gets a patsy. Apollo, uh, Tone Loke, that fool she was pretending to date just so that she could be on uh, marriage boot camp. 
So Phaedra walked Kenya back to the house and Apollo joined him and that's pretty much the end of the episode. So let's get to episode 10 of the best season of the series. Well, one of the best. This is really when Atlanta hit its stride. <laughs> so we open with Nene and Kenya going to lunch and Nene says, my honest impression of Kenya is she is delusional. So Nini says, you know, I enjoyed Angula and getting to know everybody, but uh, we all aren't going to click. And Kenya says, oh, I know, me and Portia certainly didn't. Ooh, Nini and this, still with the Decatur quick weave and you back in Atlanta. But what's going on with you and Walter? Y'all were really bumping heads. Well, they certainly weren't bumping bussies. Child, Nini trying to tell Kenya to walk away because Walter ain't interested, but she ain't hearing it. So Cynthia arrives to Portia's house for lunch. Candy's on her way too. And we see how pretty the house that she got kicked out of was. It was very nice. So Portia's telling the girls she's got the big house because she wants to have twins and she's on her yams because in Africa a whole bunch of women were eating yams and they had twins. Candy, mind you, without a degree, and Portia has one, says, well, honey, don't you think it could be hereditary since it's the same village in Africa? And Portia was like, yeah, it might be. I'm not sure. <laughs> Candy said, I want another two kids, but Riley doesn't want me to have to do what I have to do to get them. And Portia says, does she know her mama? So Todd is actually acting like a man who's interested in marriage, bringing it up, asking for ring sizes, following through, letting lights fall on Elise Neal and getting sued. But that's neither here nor there. Speaking of pending engagements, have you spoken to Kenya? I don't know why you're speaking of pending engagement and can't keep a man Kenya in the same sentence. <laughs> well, the last time I saw Kenya was at the dinner in Anguilla and Candy says, I heard she slept on the couch that night. Now, how are you going to sleep on a couch when it's your trip in your room? How do you give your bed up to the rental? So they're all talking about how puzzling Kenya's relationship with Walter is and how they're not on the same page in the same book at the same library on the same block. Meanwhile, across town, Portia, Apollo, and Kenya are having a meeting about her production company and the donkey booty. So Kenya gonna say she's upset that Portia wasn't better prepared. I mean, she didn't even have a name for the DVD. But she gonna say her time is valuable to who? Not to men. Oh, goodness. So Kenya gonna show them her little movie that she did. She was in it. She said, oh, I was playing a hooker. We were role playing. Do y'all role play? And Phaedra's like, I tried to get you to keep your paws off my man. And here you go again, hitting on him. So Phaedra wants to do a light workout. And Apollo's like, if you're doing something for 30 to 35 minutes, you ain't really doing anything. Like your body ain't even started burning fat until the 30 minute mark. And he got a point. So Phaedra and Apollo get to arguing over the DVD and Kenya said it was so unprofessional. Like your pilot? I'm going to review your pilot and we'll see how professional that is. But now we join Cynthia and Penelope Thomas barely. And of course Penelope Thomas gets a Google alert on his phone that Phaedra and Apollo are getting divorced. So Cynthia says, well, the only thing I've heard about Apollo is that he's always in the strip club. Peter, you going to the strip club? And he gonna say once every six months. You mean once every six hours? That's where all Cynthia's money went. And that's where all Bar Nun's money went too. He said, well, I did go the day before yesterday. Peter said, look, it's just a distraction. We ain't going there to get with none of them women. We just, you know, get a lap dance. And she said, well, they're not naked, are they? He said, they're bucket naked, nothing on, nothing on. Chow, so basically you saying you coming home crusty, funky, and dusty. <laughs> I see why she dropped you. And broke. And broke. We can't forget broke. So Cynthia says, well, I'd confront Phaedra, but you know she ain't gonna tell me the truth. And Penelope says, you know that's right. Girl, please, Apollo ain't going nowhere. Except to prison. Prison. But you see, they didn't know that the feds were watching. But we do now. Oh, goodness. Cynthia gonna say, maybe the four of us could go together to the strip club. We should go. And this is when the lesbonics begin to peek their head out. The lesbonics. But now we have Kenya meeting up with Walter and his cheap toupee. Kenya gone say I've been avoiding Walter since Anguilla. No, he's been avoiding you. So Kenya says, well, I haven't talked to you in a couple days because when Anguilla, when we went on that walk on the beach and you told me anything could happen, I thought you were serious. Instead, you were stringing me along to be on the show. 
I guess I just felt blindsided. And Walter gonna say I felt blindsided. How? You know you set that heifer up on camera. He gonna admit, well, I said anything is possible. That's it. I'm sorry, that's a hint. That's a hope. That's throwing somebody a life preserver. You should have said, well, not this trip, but maybe we'll come back here. You know, the year isn't up, anything is possible, if you were really entertaining it, but you weren't entertaining it or her. The only thing you were entertaining was a free trip and a fee. And you still didn't upgrade your toupees. Kenya upgraded her skin, you didn't upgrade your toupees. Kenya said, well, you know, it seemed like you were angry about it when Peter brought it up at the table and you were the one who said anything could happen. We've got three days. So why are you mad when Peter bring it up when these are the words that came out of your mouth? And he was irritated with this whole pushing marriage plot line, but you played into it. And you can't lead a fruitcake on. Kenya telling Walter, I'm a woman of a certain age and I don't want to be a 50 year old bride. Honey, that's not his problem, that's yours. And what's wrong with being a 50 year old bride if you get it right? I think you were a 50 year old bride and you got it wrong. Kenya said, okay, so within the next six months, can I get a proposal? The man isn't interested in you, and he's a piece of shit. Like, you have one good time to tell me anything can happen over three days, and once them three days is up, if ain't nothing happen, child, then we up. Ain't no re-up. We up. <laughs> Walter's laughing at her, saying, well, at your age, you all this wifey material, but you ain't got a man, boo. You had to rent me. So who's really wifey? Walter really gonna lie to this heifer's face and say, well, I love you, I just can't be pressured into marrying you. You don't love her. And Kenya's gonna say, well, why do you love me? And that's a good question. Why do you love Kenya? I mean, she's, well, she's good with her money. She's good with her money. She's prompt and gracious to her fans. I said three nice things about Kenya. Write it down, June 2nd, 2021, write it down. It may never happen again. He said, okay, I love you, but I don't love you enough to marry you. Not today, maybe not in six months. So I don't, I don't know when, but uh, maybe. I didn't just finish paying off the last heifer. So Walter never could say why he loved her, cause he don't. So he's like, look, I gotta go to work, but uh, I guess you didn't hear what you wanted to hear. And Kenya walk off alone again, as she will be for the next decade. Meanwhile, across town at Candy's new homes, plural, Phaedra done brought over her pastor for a blessing. I'm sure they were just there casing the joint and getting personal in for May May. But Phaedra gonna bring up Todd proposing and Candy's like, I don't want to scare off my man like Kenya did hers. Phaedra's saying, I want to kill my husband a lot of days. Marriage is hard. I want to injure him. So you just put him in prison prison. And now we travel up to Duluth with Portia and Sissy Stewart. They're in the hot tub that never saw any action. You know, the furrow in Cordell's brow is so deep, it looks like a vagina. I mean, it just like the, the crest. If you go to the episode on Hulu at the 23 minute and 39 second mark, it's just like there's a line here and then there's two pieces here. It's, it's, a, it's a forehead vagina. I guess it's a fussy, a forehead pussy, a fussy. You can tell they never use that hot tub because they ain't got the sunshade over it. They just out in the sun just sweating. And he talking about his opinions of the husband. Ooh, Apollo's a good dude. Oh, I bet you'd think he is. You'd love to give him your toot. <laughs> but later that night, we've got Peter and Cynthia. And Cynthia said, how much we got? And Peter said, enough to make it drizzle. And Cynthia gonna say, I'm expensive. No, Cynthia, you are cheap. We've seen your homemade dresses. And if you were some type of seamstress, I could actually rock with it. But um, no, honey, mm -mm. you are not the queen of crafts. And Peter gonna tell her, you're not that expensive. You're with me <laughs> and I blow your money. So because Cynthia suggested they go to a titty bar, that's where we are. But um. I guess King of Diamonds was gonna charge them too much. Bravo said, oh no, we gonna take it down to the honky tonk strip bar. And that's what this is, a honky tonk, not jip joint, it's honky tonk. This is where Kim Zolciak picked up Big Papa. <laughs> Cynthia said, how old is she? Peter said her breasts are 22, but she's around 90. <laughs> Ooh, these are some hard faced hoes, like Kim Zolciak. 
<laughs> Peter said, I feel like I'm in the land of the lost. I mean, that one woman, hey, ooh, um, it's amateur hour. Oh, God, now we have Apollo showing us why Phaedra's like, oh, Lord, he's an idiot. The dick might be good, but he's an idiot. Time is for people who have to live by time restraint. So are you Doctor Who or something? Can you manipulate time? Is that what you're saying? Or you can just manipulate the VIN numbers in the way Phaedra taught you. So Apollo starts airing out their business. Oh, Phaedra was calling me. Where the hell are you when you was at the strip club hunching? You know you was hunching. I feel like he gives it out from Cordelia to Kimberly. So Apollo says, I think we've gotten a little bitter because we've lost who we are during the marriage. He wants to go back to being the fun, juvial person that he was. He's, he was so juvial, just cracking jokes and whatnot. Just juvial. Juvial. How do you confuse jovial with the juvenile detention centers you spent half of your childhood in? I think you know the difference betwixt the words, but I guess you were on that Mike Tyson vocabulary program. Oh, but now we've got Nene doing the money dress on the cover of Ebony magazine. Her moment of relevance. Who knew it would end so quickly and so abruptly? I guess it just goes to show Hollywood can hang up just as quick as they pick up. I don't know whose event we at. It might be Cynthia's burgeoning wine line, but her, Phaedra, Apollo, and Penelope Thomas Bailey are all in attendance. And now Candy shows up. Oof. Looking like she running to Target. Oh, actually, the dress is cute, but the hair is Target. Oh, even Portia and Cordelia are showing up. Apparently, it is Cynthia's wine tasting. I know she has a wine bar. Does she still have her wine? They weren't selling her wine at BravoCon. Cordelia walks up to Penelope Thomas Bailey and says, Silverback. Mm-hmm. I bet you worrying about his silver back. So the men's is, is drinking they tequila and Cordelia's like, I'm not, I'm not scared of Don Julio, but I know what he'll do to me. Mm-hmm. He'll out you. That's what Don Julio would do, Cordelia. He'll out you. You'll lean over and start rubbing on Penelope's leg, putting your bussy in Apollo's face. Mm-hmm. You just want to break free. So Peter asked Apollo, when you were in the joint, how many hours a day were you confined? And he said 16 hours a day. And you let Phaedra send you back to that? You are a true mark and the definition of a moron. Oh, God. So over with Candy and Kenya, she says, well, me and Walter talked and I'm still trying to figure it out. He told you he didn't want to marry you now or within the next six months. It was very blunt. Like his toupee, blunt and ugly. Child Walter came in, strutted right past Kenya, and made a beeline for the boys. Mm-hmm, he's here for the free drinks. And so Walter's like, look, I don't know what's going on with Kenya, but you can't pressure me. I read the terms of our contract, and yes, I did agree to film with you, but I never said I would be nice. So Walter finally says hey to the ladies, and they're like, how long you been here? He's like, oh, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. You was there for a full half hour getting drunk with your friends for free. That's a free drink to pay, I can tell you that. And Kenya says, Walter spent 10 minutes having shots with the guys and didn't even come find me to say hello because he don't care about you. You're the hard-headed heifer in this situation. You're the fool. An old fool at that. Everybody plays the fool, but you've dedicated yourself to the role. Oh, God. And so as Kenya's trying to storm off from Walter, Portia says, okay, let me go up and give her an awkward confrontate. Portia knew what she was doing. Old snake in the grass, hussy. And Cordell gonna be standing there like he's security. Take your rail head on. Don't you have a bathroom booty toot video to record? So Portia says, I know things went a little crazy in Angula, but how do we move forward from this? And Kenya gonna say, well, I really don't want to get to know you. I don't want to be your friend. You've got a lot of growing to do. Well, you know what? It's funny. Portia actually did that growing while you have stayed stagnant for years. But child, Walter didn't come in and act like he didn't see you. He just doesn't see it for you and acted accordingly. He gave you the truth. You refused to accept it. And now Cordelia coming in with the controlling maneuvers. Well, if you have to address her again, it's going to be a problem between me and you. Child, this is Bravo. We beat dead horses over here. Stay out of women's business. 
You just worry about your enemies. That's what you need to be focused on. Keep that pussy clean if you're gonna toot it. But now all talk turns to the blogs about Phaedra and Apollo's pending divorce. So Apollo says, well, I don't feed into it and Phaedra don't feed into it, so it's whatever. But Apollo, you should be worrying about the feds, not the blogs. But he says every day Phaedra's on one million. Yeah, because she can't stand you and she's ready for you to go to prison. For her. Phaedra says, I don't know what's going on in the blogs. I laugh about it, but it's not true. Oh, yes, it is, you lying fraud. Oh, Lord, but now Apollo trying to squeeze in and Phaedra wants to give him a go away from me with this. Oh, Lord, now they start making out. I guess it's that short love. But it's not giving me plausibility. Well, that was the shit. Let's get back to the circle. Let's take it back down. Back down, back down memory lane with the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So we open with Nene finding out Brent's having his first baby. She had to bump into the heifer at the Kroger to find out she was pregnant. Child Nene's first new normal check must have cleared because the back of her head is done. I can't believe it. Maybe she got dressed up for the glam baby. Brent kept it real. He said, look, I'm going to have a couple more and I ain't getting married. And he stuck to that. So we get a cute scene with Riley warming up to Tiny Todd. But, but across town, Kenya's having dinner with Aunt Lesbian. And she's whining about how she blew it with Walter on the trip to Jamaica. Honey, Walter never wanted you in the first place. He just wanted a free trip and your paycheck. Not your pussy, but your paycheck. So Kenya talking about how she was in the shower and he didn't make a pass and then went to sleep. He wasn't interested. And Kenya's like, you know what? I do need to have another conversation with Walter to see where this relationship is going. It's going up your button to the left. He said he wasn't going to marry you and that's all you want. A ring that don't mean a thing. And now we have Porsche and Candy's budding friendship at the furniture store, where Porsche said, yeah, I did the big pieces from here and said, don't show me no receipts. Well, honey, a sissy will always blow the budget on furniture. Trust and believe I know. Oh, Lord. Porsche thinks Candy's going to see something nice and splurge on it. Candy sees many nice things, but splurging, <laughs> I don't see her doing it. And Candy finds out Portia didn't get a prenup. And that's why Portia got put out on the street, on the curb, with Kenya and her ashy feet. She said if I ever did leave him, I'd be so hurt. I'd be like Tina Turner, just give me my name. Well, you got it, Portia Williams. I bet you he played that in divorce court and that's what ruined her. So Portia tells Candy how much she can't deal with Kenya. And Candy tell her, look, just do your thing and ignore the heifer. But across town, Nene and a dun back of her head meet Cynthia. Oh, God. Cynthia says, oh, I need to sign up your granddaughter for baby modeling. Can you get yourself a gig anymore at this point? So Kenya Moore is doing a photo shoot for one of them butt magazines. You know, the modeling work that Cynthia wouldn't touch. She gonna say, so many men want to look at this lumpy butt. And my own man does it. Mm-hmm. Because he got to know you. And Candy shows up for support. And of course, Candy shows up with some bedroom candy for full free press and promomo. Well, Kenya, at least somebody gave you an orgasm. Because Mark sure didn't. Walter sure didn't. Maybe Mike did. Maybe he did. I don't know. I don't know. So Kenya gone tell Candy. Walter was really defensive telling me that, oh, well, you think you wife and material, but you ain't married. That was real defensive to me, and I get suspicious when people get defensive. I don't know why you're not suspicious of the fact that he said he didn't want to marry your lumpy butt. That's where you get suspicious because he told you the truth. He don't want you, and you don't act like you want him. You're pining for Apollo's penis. You're not getting wet over Walter. Candy said, didn't y'all have a conversation about what was going to happen in Anguilla before you left? Of course. No, you didn't. You decided to blindside him. So Candy tries to tell her Walter don't want her, but she's going to keep beating that dead horse and keep chasing that uninterested man. And it's what she does. We've seen it over the past decade. Oh, goodness, but now we got Nene and Greg drinking out their wedding glasses trying to pump Bravo for a special.
So Nene getting ready to move out to Los Angeles for the new normal. She don't know she about to come back, honey. You could have gotten a quick little rental. <laughs> Greg gonna say, I, I don't know how to pack the clothes. Nene said, you sound like you slow. That's the Nene we loved. So Candy's just driving all over town because now she's stopping by Cynthia and Penelope Thomas Bailey's rental. And Candy's happy that Nene and Greg are back together. She was just tired of the adroit lies. And a hackneyed plot line. Oh, God, and Porsche's here, too. It's going to be an evening of nice, nasty. <laughs> Phaedra said, I ain't surprised that Kenya here in Manless. He likes, Walter likes to hang out more with the husbands rather than you. So Peter asks Greg, what you gonna do when you get out to Los Angeles? And he says, oh, I got a deal working with a couple real estate agencies already. And the look on Peter's face, he's like, oh, okay, so we gonna lie. So let's just drink this Don Julio because I ain't got time to hear about your Neverland ass business. Oh, God. And now we have Kenya saying she gets mistaken for Beyonce. This guy asked her, are you Beyonce? You don't look anything like Beyonce, nothing. Nothing like Beyonce. Nothing. I've seen you in person. Nothing. Nothing. Now, could Portia pass for Solange? A little bit. A little bit. Oh, Lord, but she keeps doing this, like, two-tone, fucked-up eye makeup where this is one color and this is another, so it's like it's a black eye here and a bruise here. It don't look good. It gives you a clownish tea. So Portia gonna say, and I look like Solange. And Candy looked at her and said, I can see that. I can see. You do favor. You two do favor. You got, you know, the big expressive eyes. You do favor. Especially back then. But then when Candy says, so y'all sisters, the way Portia's face dropped. I mean, her face dropped. It dropped. Dropped. Like Sissy Small Yehu was dropped from Columbia Records. Dropped. Like a bad habit. Dropped. Like Kenya's men drop her. Dropped, dropped, dropped. Her face dropped. It hit the flow. It hit the flow. It got so low she said no, no, no. Meanwhile, Cynthia said Kenya thinks she looks so much like Beyonce, but her man won't put a ring on it. Oh, Lord. Penelope talking about he used to run the entertainment division at Source and was dating me along. I don't believe you. So we have a good time at Nene's farewell and the next day. Oh, Jesus, Kenya and Walter are going fishing. Child, you casting your line at the wrong time. I mean, Kenya, I would tell you there's plenty other fish in the sea, but you ain't gonna find none. It's funny how you go fishing, but you keep getting thrown back. Okay, so Kenya line gets stuck and she said, can you go get it? He said, I can't go in the water and get anything. I'm in my flea market Gucci. He said, you've already got your dungarees rolled up like your nini. You can get it. It's right there. Oh, Kenya said, he doesn't want to get dirty. He's just not man enough for me. Well, he's not interested in you either. So I guess it works. So she asked him what's wrong in the relationship. And he said, you tell me. You always asking questions, but you can't answer them. And she says, well, every answer I get from you is the wrong one. Because, you, because he's not interested. Because he's not interested. So she said, what did I do? Uh, you pressured me to marry you in Anguilla? And you know I didn't want to? Okay, he just told you how he felt. That you pressured him to marry you in Anguilla. And he's not going to just chuck everything and do that. Why are you now asking, well, what does this mean? Say how you feel. You too stupid. You ain't, you too smart to play this stupid. So she tell him, well, I was in the shower all naked and lathered, and you didn't do anything. He said, well, you didn't either. I ain't going to tell you when it's time to fuck. You should know. Now, Walter, that's a wimp saying you wanted her to make the first move. You were teasing her. You were like, you know what? I'm going to show you the dick that you ain't paid for. You should have gotten the full package instead of the little LX rental. Are you attracted to me? Clearly not. Walter's like, look, it's always me. What about you? Are you perfect? Kenya says, I feel like you don't care. He doesn't. I feel unloved. You aren't. You aren't loved. You are unloved. Your feelings are correct. Walter said, I I'm not feeling something. I don't know what it is, but I feel like I'm being rushed to do something that I really don't want to do. You act like you don't like me. You don't want to hold my hand, spend time with me, touch me, call me. Get the hint, heifer. Get the hint. 
You've already given me my answer, Walter. This isn't working. This is no way to have a relationship. What, because you didn't get married in two days? And he says, you know what? I agree. Thank God I ain't got to look at you no more. <laughs> Kenya said, well, that's it for fishing today. And Walter said, you ain't even catch nothing. Ooh, you shady little queen. Well, that was the shit. We start with the recap of last episode and Kenya saying, I'm so done with Walter. Well, he been done with you. But Nene's settling into her Hollywood Hills rental. And girl, Nene using Kenya's old furniture that she had in storage. Balling on a budget. Nene gonna say she hopes the furniture is in good taste. Why, your other house isn't in good taste. You're you love a artless, rugless, plantless tea. All you need is two couches from Ikea and a futon. Ooh, these lamps. These tacky, tacky lamps. What type of estate sale crap is this? This looks like a free shipment from Craigslist. Like they just went and drove around the city, picked up everything free. Sounds like Kenya to me. Well, Nene was smart not to go on and buy a bunch of furniture and keep it on a budget, because Hollywood booted you out. I don't even think you were in that joker for a year. But back in Atlanta at Candy's house, oh, it's Todd's birthday. Candy's springing for a helicopter ride. I guess when there's a man, she finally opens that wall up. They were making Todd a cake and that cake looked good. I saw them putting in vanilla extract. I'm like, okay, this ain't no mix. Oh, now we have Auntie Lesbian and her daughter going to visit Kenya. You know, I would say it would be a lot more realistic if they would mic them when they came in and show them putting on the mics rather than having them walk in and it's like, oh yeah, we're just getting here, but you're fully mic'd. You're fully mic'd. You've got the battery in your back and everything. All right. Child, they put Kenya on blast. Wait, you're cooking real food? You can cook? That's got to be rubber. Shade. So they want to know what's up with Walter. <sighs> Child. I mean, she's, what, 48 at this point? You know she can't keep a man. So they talk about, well, I didn't like how he was acting in Anguilla. Um, he was acting like he wasn't interested. He wasn't interested. He's not that into you. You was naked, and he was like, mm-mm. Mm-mm, I'm not going to fall into the tender trap. Oh, God. You going to say he's gay because he's not affectionate towards Kenya? That means a whole lot of men is gay. Every man she gets with must turn sissy from her presence. Now, Walter's many things. Cheap toupee wearing, melted face looking, anybody saying, but I don't think that's a sis. I don't think that's a sis. It's her personality. And the fact that she'll flirt with other men in front of you. Oh, Shay was right about that toupee though. I'm glad she called it out. I mean, it was a cheap toupee. A cheap Steve Harvey. At least Steve Harvey's toupees didn't look like he needed a haircut. Walter went with the toupee that looked like you needed a haircut so that way it would seem more real. So wait, what type of piece of shit family does Kenya have? Because the cousin said, oh, he tried to talk to me back in the day. I didn't go with him. So you knew that this man tried to holler at you and you didn't tell your good cousin Kenya. Your, your sister. That's not very sisterly. You, that's the, like the second I saw him, I'd be like, oh yeah, he asked me out, nothing happened, but I just to mention it up front off rip. But you gonna wait until the relationship's over and then say something? For once, I feel sorry for Kenya, and that takes some doing. But the next day, Kenya, Phaedra, and Apollo meet up for the donkey booty video. A donkey booty? I, mean, I guess she got a donk. I just... I don't know, nothing ever seemed attractive about an ass's ass. Lord, they giving us the corny music. We doing a dry run through. And you know when they give you that corny music, they really making fun of you. They like, this ain't gonna work. And it didn't. I don't think anybody bought those DVDs. Well, I looked up Kenya Moore's video and guess what? It's in stock. So Kenya's company wants a hundred grand up front to do the video. Phaedra ain't got that. And if she does, she ain't giving it to you. Kenya said, I've been working for three for the past six weeks. Well, you've been a fool for the past 40-something years, so I'm not surprised you're continuing with the process. Across town, Phaedra meets with her lawyer to go over the paperwork for Don Kibuti and Kenya's percentage. Oh, Lord, so now Kenya and her sissy are coming to this meeting. What do you need Brandon there for? So Phaedra says, you want 10% of the back end? I don't think so. 
Kenya said, well, this is how I make my money. The budget is so small that it's not an incentive for me to make less than $5,000. Well, child, this is Phaedra Parks. You're lucky you're getting away without prison. For not just jail, but prison. Phaedra said, well, look, I called Todd. Now, the problem with Todd's production company is they ain't properly insured, nor do they hang their lights properly. So when one busts your head open and you got to go get a $50,000 MRI, that's on you. Ask Elise Neal. So Kenya's upset she's been working for free. You and me. That's why you have contracts before you start working, not after. Kenya said, well, I usually get 50%. And Phaedra said, from who? That's a good question. So Kenya thinks that Apollo wants to do business with her. And if she could just get him away from Phaedra, they could work it out. Mm-hmm. But he says, we'll look at the numbers and get back to you. Kenya walking out. I could barely buy a pair of shoes for this job. And I only wear $1,000 Louboutins. That's probably why you have corns, which I'm sure doesn't help your poor disposition. Apollo was like, well, Kenya did come with a good distribution deal. I mean, we will be everywhere at once. And what happens with y'all's relationship if we don't go with Kenya? She said, well, we ain't been friends for that long, so I'm cool. Well, you know Phaedra. She's always looking for a patsy. So take it on down to $2 Todd. Oh, Lord, we in Nini's trailer and you can see the dungarees hanging up in the back. You know, I have to say, I don't know why Nini isn't acting. Like, I feel like there's enough roles out there where she could get something, you know, on some of these new shows as a bit character. And they film a lot in Atlanta. I don't know why you don't call Ty Ty. That's right, you did try to call Tyler and it said do do do. The number you have reached is no longer in service. Please hang up or try your call again. Oh, Lord. Cordelia's railed head. He's bringing Portia breakfast in bed since he certainly isn't giving her any orgasms in it. Oh, this gay-ass bed. I'm sorry. I, I know heterosexual couples. And the bed ain't never this feminine. Is this Portia's bedroom and Cordelia's is down the hall? This gives me a, a separate bedroom marriage tea. Because this, this is a princess bed. Ain't no, especially as macho as Cordelia is. Oh no, he's not sleeping with rhinestones and a champagne cushion. Oh, now we get to see Candy spoil her man. Since we never see her spoil herself with a decent look. Ooh, all that money and you showed up to the reunion looking like that. You should have called Erica Jane. So everybody's waiting for Todd and Candy to arrive at the party. And Kenya's like, Phaedra just acting like nothing's wrong. Because Phaedra doesn't care. Phaedra knows how to use and move on to the next. If one scam doesn't flow, she's always conjuring up another con. Oh my goodness, so Apollo talks to Kenya and she's just trying to get the deal done, get in his pants. He's just trying to get the deal done so he can make legal money. He's tired of running around to car dealerships every night, taking pictures of VIN numbers. So he tells Phaedra, well, she said as a lawyer, you should know nobody's working for free. And she says, I work for free all the time. You're telling on yourself because you can only afford to work for free because he's going out stealing cars for you. Now Candy and Todd walk in and everybody says surprise. And then Mama Sharon come up giving us the double Dutch bus. So now Kenya going to try to pump Todd for information since Phaedra's giving her the brush off, the brush off. Candy's like, uh, this is his birthday. We can have your bull at another time. You know how Candy is about her man. Candy got tight teeth real quick. She ran over to Phaedra and said, I'm, I will fuck you up over my man and I'm not playing with you. I done brought his mama here and put him on a helicopter and you think you about to ruin the hard earned money. I spent, oh hell no. However, the next day we're at the Barely Agency and the casting for Phaedra's video has been postponed. So Phaedra didn't quote about the casting and Cynthia's like, we're not prepared for a mob of wannabe reality stars to come down here and try to get on Housewives of Atlanta. So can you tell him Cynthia, child, Phaedra didn't want to pay me shit, not shit. Cynthia's like, what? She should know this ain't pro bono. Cynthia's like, I'm trying to get a casting fee. I've been written this fake office so I can write it off, but I still need to make something. Because Phaedra sure wanted her five grand from Shit Ray Whitfield. 
And she knew that was a rubber check. That's why she never even tried to cash it. She said, look, I'm gonna just end up with a $34 return check fee. I ain't even wasting my time. Here you go, heifer. So now Phaedra shows up. Cynthia's like, yeah, I had to cancel that casting because I didn't have any information, AKA my fee up front. Oh Lord. Carlos, the original Bailey boy, who was also the idiot on Love is Blind is sitting in the room while Kenya's saying, I deserve something from the deal I brought to the table. And you didn't even counter Phaedra because Phaedra was here to use you like she used Apollo. So Phaedra stays firm on you ain't getting no back end. You ain't getting 10%, 5%, or no percent. I'm not feeling well, and this has made me sick, so I'm just going to go. Okay, Kenya, take your tired sissy and leave. Child, Kenya left and didn't even say bye to Fei Fei. And that was the shot.